everybody, it's me, Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie. On this episode of CD Junkie, I'm going to talk about an incredible band. You hear the terms uh, underrated and overlooked many times, but nothing, nothing can ever t- describe the, 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 the atrocity of, of this band not being way more popular than they are this this band should be huge all over the world and it's all thanks to their leader the band i'm talking about is the silencers and their leader jimmy o'neill what an incredibly gifted singer songwriter a, a unique voice a unique musical vision uh he's one of those singers that uh, uh he's able to express his emotion in his voice so when it's like a joyful song you hear that joy in his voice when it's something maybe a little more serious sad and somber you can hear uh the emotion in his voice coming out it's just a whole different emotion this is one of the few vocalists that is probably even more emotive today than he ever has been and usually like to start these videos off by telling you how i got into the artist and that's Basically, back in the day, you know, we're talking late 70s, uh, I'd be flipping through the bins and I came across this band called Fingerprints. I'd never heard them, decided to check them out. And that was the first album called The Very Dab. And it, it was wonderful. Uh, but then their second album, Distinguishing Marks, truly a crime that this has never been released on CD. Probably... Oh gosh, what was 1980? Best one of the best albums of that year. One of the best albums of the era is produced by uh, Nick Garvey from the Motors, uh, and just it was this big bombastic, wonderful, wonderful piece of music. Then their third album was a little bit darker, uh, going back to sort of the sounds of the debut album, but with the pop understanding of distinguishing marks. There is a CD that Rubell and Remasters put out. And it was a collection of fingerprints. So you get some songs off of each album. It's a very wonderful collection. But we're not going to talk about fingerprints. We're going to talk about his next band. Now, fingerprints had split after their third album. But in 1986, uh, the two guitarists, essentially singer-songwriter Jimmy O'Neill and lead guitarist Cha Burns, got back together and they formed The Silencers. And their debut album came out in 1987. A, a, a wonderful, just great pop record. It's very pop, but then there are little bits of there. You can hear the blues underneath it. You can hear uh, Celtic folk underneath it. Uh, but still, you know, on the surface, this is a very, very great pop record. Uh, the album is called A Letter from St. Paul. Came out in 87, produced by David Bascom or Bascomi. I I don't know how to pronounce English. Uh, but uh, the first song I heard off this was the first track called Painted Moon. Boy, was I excited when I found out that Jimmy and Cha were back because I was a huge fan of Fingerprints. And when I discovered that they were in a band called Silencers, I had to go out and get it. I found it, and it was everything I had hoped for and so much more. Lots of great tracks on that. You should definitely, definitely check that out if you see it on vinyl or CD. The second album came out in 1988, and it is called A Blues for Buddha. And this is produced by Flood and the Silencers. Uh, Now, this here is the uh, British version of the album. The American version remixed some of the tracks, and I can't believe that I don't have the American version. That's the version I used to have, then I bought this. But this continues in the same uh, vein as uh, Letter from St. Paul. Their next album came out in 1991. Now, this was produced by, uh, there's some tracks produced by Jimmy, uh, and then some tracks produced like Mark Wallace, and then John Leckie. Uh, now, the thing is, is the silencers, you know, at this point, it was, you know, Jimmy and Shaw, but there were other players in the band. Uh, but the players would, you know, I'm, I'm not getting in depth. You know, I would say, you know, check out Wikipedia or buy the albums and check out who plays on them. But uh, uh, like this album was the first appearance from J.J. Gilmore, who uh, also went by the name uh, Jinky. But, uh, you know, I mean, the bands also included uh, uh, Phil Kane and uh, Stevie Kane, Lewis Rankin, uh, Martin Hanlon, uh, Tony, uh, the drummer, uh, Tony Suave or Sove. 
I don't know. I Like I said, I don't speak English. But Jinky for the next couple of hours would prove to be, you know, a really nice addition to the band because he was offering uh, a lot of vocal support for Jimmy. Now, this album is a little darker than uh, uh, the previous two. But there's a song on here called Bulletproof Heart, which is a fingerprint song that the silencers re-recorded. The version here isn't as good as the fingerprints version, but uh, it was great to reintroduce that song to a new audience. Now, all three of those albums were available domestically, but the rest of the catalog uh, was never released in the U.S., which is very, very, very sad uh, in itself, including 1993's Seconds of Pleasure. Yes, it's the same title as the Rock Pile album. And another great collection. This just continues that sound that they started with, but they're adding like, uh, you know, on on uh, Dance of the Holy Man, they were adding more like blues and Celtic, and this sort of goes that direction too. And this one was produced by Jimmy O'Neill and Kenny McDonald, and it's just got a really clean sound, but it's more variety, just more great music from uh, the pen of Jimmy O'Neill and, of course, the sound of the silencers. 1995 came around, and so be it. The album, uh, this was also produced by Jimmy O'Neill and Kenny McDonald and continues in the same and, and starts adding that Celtic influence a little bit more, the folky aspects of the band, uh, but still great pop. Uh, a significant thing on here was that uh, Jimmy's daughter, uh, Aura O'Neill, sang on their cover of Wild Mountain Time, and that actually became uh, a sizable hit. I think it was used in advertisements and stuff. But this was kind of it for the band uh, for this lineup. Uh, I, I think Cha Burns left, uh, Jinky, you know, J.J. Gilmore left. And the band took a low profile, but in 1996, I was going to mention that this Blood and Rain Best Of came out. But if you want to introduce yourself to the band, uh, Blood and Rain would probably be a great gateway album. Took another three years and out came the album Receiving. This was almost a complete new lineup. Uh, the Kane brothers are still there. And uh, Ara O'Neill is an official member of the band. Uh, also, his son, James O'Neill, is a member of the band as well. Now, this album, though, is very, very different. Uh, it's not all straight ahead pop. There's some like psychedelic elements on here. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, in fact, this kind of is very similar to the uh, Fingerprints album, the third one, Beat Noir, where it's maybe a little darker, uh, but there's psychedelia, there's folk, there's straight ahead pop. It's a, it's a really varied album. Uh, and it seems more like it might have been a Jimmy O'Neill solo album uh, originally. Uh, but, uh, you know, like I said, with the other members playing on it, lots of great songs on it. Not a gateway album, but this is definitely one you need to have in your collection because it is very unique. Uh, it's very different. But Jimmy O'Neill's talents shine right through. In 2001, there was a live album, I believe. But you know me in live albums. I avoid them at all costs. So in 2004, out comes the album Come. Now, this is a limited edition version that features a CD and DVD. So there's the cover out of the slipcase. This sort of continues in the same vein as receiving, but it's far more commercial, far more cohesive. Uh, James and Ara are, are, are really becoming integral parts of the band uh, and lots of great songs on here. I don't want to call it a return to form because they never really fell out of form. They're just a band that changes and, and, and just adds new elements to their music. And uh, this is another fine album. But that was it for a while. Uh, they sort of disappeared. I think there might have been a live album. But in 2008, Jimmy O'Neill put out his first solo album called Real. And this album here, it's truly solo because it's a lot of acoustic songs. Uh, you know, they're, they're all new originals. It's not like he's going back and covering songs from the past. Uh, but there'll be acoustic guitar. Or there'll be, you know, a little bit of keyboards or whatever. But it's very, very, very simple and wonderful because his voice, because the songs. I think that there's actually more emotion on this album than on previous albums. Uh, so it's definitely uh, something you should add to your collection if you have all the silencers and you don't have this already. In 2000, I think 2011, 2012, uh, he formed Jimmy O'Neill and the Honky Tonk Hicks. Now, this is a very, very unique album uh, because he had put together this trio, folky, country, blues, and, uh, you know, guitar, bass, drums. But one of the members, Vincent, I think it's like Razavet or something. 
is an incredible whistler. <laughs> whistler, I'm saying he whistles even better than Roger Whitaker. But it just it, it, incredible through the whole thing. He whistles. I mean, the songs are pop songs, but you know his whistling is coming in like a like an Irish flute almost, uh, and it's fascinating and it's wonderful and it's catchy and they do jimmy o'neill originals as well as a few covers on there as well really really wonderful now there's a song on here called after the fall now that song would appear in jimmy's next band the celtic social club and jimmy's on two albums by them uh this was kind of like a a, a celtic folk super group type thing with jimmy o'neill uh handling uh lead vocals on a lot of the tracks this contains a bonus dvd and this came out in 2014 in 2017 he put out another celtic social club album this is called a new kind of freedom and this is more varied than that first album uh this has songs that are kind of rock or pop but still, you know, plenty of, you know, Celtic folk. Uh, and it's definitely something you should check out. I mean, Jimmy O'Neill is just an amazing vocalist. Now, this year, we're talking just weeks ago, the Silencers return with a brand new album called Silent Highway. It's incredible. It's like they took all the best elements of all the different Silencers albums and just just polished them up and released an album of just wonderful new material could not believe it i was blown away and there's there's so much emotion that goes into this and it's incredible that an artist like jimmy o'neill who has been around since 1977 is still creating music he's still top form i mean he's right up there with people like ian McNabb from icicle works john watts from fisher's ed henry Priestman from yachts it's immaterial the christians these are people that are still creating music and still breathing new life into the things that they do and absolutely wonderful but the silencers have really come back strong with silent highway this is 2023 release and highly recommended None of this, apart from the first three albums, is available in the U.S., but I highly recommend you to check them out. If you don't know anything about the Silencers or Jimmy O'Neill or the Hunky Tongue Hicks or uh, the Celtic Social Club, you are in luck because I've put together a seven-minute medley featuring snippets of two songs from each of the Silencers albums and uh, one song from each of the other albums. I just want you to sit back, relax, give this a listen, and I will see you on the other side.
something that I really believe in. I know that I'm in love. Guess who I'm thinking? Oh, oh. it's you. Anyway, that's it. I hope this inspires you to check out The Silencers. Like I said, the first three albums are available here in the U.S. The other ones you're going to have to track down on import. Please, let's give The Silencers, and especially Jimmy O'Neill, a whole lot of love. This is an artist so deserving of your time, your affection. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, to ring that bell for future notifications. And until the next time, Remember me, I'm Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie.